you're going to learn everything you'd ever need to know about trading meme coins from an actual millionaire trader. We're talking A to Z from what exactly meme coins are and why they're about to be the biggest thing ever, to making your first trade, to how to identify rug pulls and scams. Ah! and the secret proven methods behind how pros find a thousand X meme coins. I've been in this space for seven years and the majority of my gains came in over the past year or so in meme coins and made me a millionaire. The goal of this video is to equip you with all the tools needed to turn yourself into a millionaire from this meme coin gold rush just like I did. Firstly, what are meme coins and why should you care? Meme coins are simple tokens on top of blockchains like Solana or Ethereum that represent an idea. If that idea is funny or relevant, then these tokens are able to garner attention and therefore get people to buy in. Sounds simple but it's a huge breakthrough. Never before in history has someone been able to create an asset incredibly easily about anything they want and instantly have a global market for the world to trade it. Couple that with humans innate want to get rich and the dopamine received from catching 100x pumps or even being around them and you can understand why meme coins are so appealing and why I think they're going to continue growing and are about to take over the world which means tens of billions of dollars flowing into the meme coin space push pushing up prices so we can sell much higher. So how do you actually buy meme coins? Firstly, you need to convert your fiat money, which are US dollars or pounds or just normal currencies into crypto. And the easiest way to do that is through Coinbase. It's pretty intuitive, so I won't go into it much. You simply need to follow the steps to make an account on Coinbase. I'll leave a link to it in the description down below. You'll need to give them some info to verify who you are and then deposit cash using PayPal or a bank transfer. Now, there are three main chains people trade meme coins today, Solana, Ethereum, and Base. You can think of a chain as just being the underlying platform for people to launch and trade meme coins on top of. It's the equivalent of Facebook versus Instagram versus MySpace. They're all social media sites where you can upload pictures, but they're different and you need to make a separate account on each to use them. If you learn how to use Solana, Base, and Ethereum, those are the giants. You'll be able to trade most meme coins. And that's what we're going to do. Firstly, buy some Solana on Coinbase. It's the main currency of the Solana chain. On top of that, buy some Ethereum. Both Ethereum and Base use the Ethereum coin as their main currency. Now, because you're still learning, I don't recommend you put a lot of money in. Just put test amounts in, like $100 in each. Once you've deposited money onto Coinbase, head to the top and click the buy and sell button. This button may have different text for you, but should still function the same. Search up the coin you want to buy, so Solana, and put in the amount you want to buy. Review order, and then buy it. And then repeat those steps, but buy Ethereum. Next, to actually trade meme coins, you need to transfer that money out of Coinbase to your own wallet. Moving money into your own wallet will actually allow you to enter Web3 and interact with all these meme coins. Let's start with Solana and I'll move on to Ethereum and Base after. Download the Phantom Wallet, links to everything in the description down below once again. Open up the extension and make a wallet. Choose a password, this is what you're going to use to log into this extension app and it will then ask you to write down your seed phrase. This is important. This seed phrase is basically the key to your wallet. So if you want to access your wallet from another device or if you break your computer, you can recover your wallet using this seed phrase. But also, if someone steals this from you, they can access your wallet and all of your money. So keep this private. For starting out, I recommend you write down your seed phrase on a piece of paper. I think this is more secure than storing it on your computer where a hacker can potentially get access to it. And lastly, triple check you wrote it down correctly. Next, let's withdraw Solana from Coinbase into your wallet. Go to your Phantom wallet, copy and paste your Solana address at the top here, then go back to Coinbase, click send and receive at the top here. You then need to select the Solana chain, put in the amount you want to withdraw, then paste in the Solana address you just copied from your Phantom wallet, and then withdraw your Solana. If you want to be extra careful, you can withdraw a small test amount of Solana first just to make sure you did everything correctly before withdrawing the full amount. After a while, your Solana should show up in your Phantom Wallet. The best tool for trading meme coins is Photon. This will be your main hub for trading and researching meme coins as it has all the tools you need to trade all in one place and compared to other sites is lightning fast when it comes to putting in trades and updating crucial info about meme coins such as the price chart. You need to create a Photon account for Solana though. So below this video, there'll be a link to some up to Photon on Solana. Click that, connect your Phantom Wallet, it will give you a private key. This will be the key to access your Photon account. Treat it like you did with the seed phrase, write it down or store it securely and keep it private. After you've made your account, click on transfer funds at the top right and you'll be able to deposit the Solana in your Phantom Wallet into Photon and begin trading. Moving on to Ethereum and Base. They share a different wallet called Metamask, but it's basically the same thing as Phantom, so repeat those steps again. Go in the description, Download Metamask. 
pick a password, then write down your seed phrase on a piece of paper and triple check you did it correctly once again because this is the key to accessing your wallet. For Ethereum and Base, you can actually use the same address for both. So on Metamask, copy and paste the address at the top, go back to Coinbase, go back to the withdrawal page. Don't withdraw all of your ETH though, withdraw half of it and select the Ethereum chain. Then paste in the address you copied from your Metamask wallet and withdraw it. And for the other half, copy and paste the same address, but select a base as the chain and then withdraw. While you're waiting for that to arrive at the top of MetaMask, click add network, add the base network and switch that. And this is how you switch between the base and Ethereum chains. The Ethereum chain can be slow, but after a while, your Ethereum should arrive on both chains in your wallet. Then we need to make a Fulton account for Ethereum and Base. Firstly, on MetaMask, make sure the chain selected is Ethereum. And just like you did with Solana, go down below this video, click on the Ethereum Fulton link, but connect with your MetaMask. Once again, make sure your MetaMask is on the Ethereum chain. Then store your Photon private key just like you did with your seed phrases. Store it securely and never share it. And then click transfer funds and deposit Ethereum onto Photon. If you try to deposit all your Ethereum, you may get an error like this. And this just means that there isn't enough Ethereum in your wallet to pay for the transaction fees. So simply reduce the amount you want to deposit and try again. Now, you know how Ethereum and Base both share the same wallet and address as each other? Well, it's the exact same for Photon. You don't need to create a separate account for Base. You just go to your MetaMask, switch to the Base chain, go to the Photon homepage just by clicking the Photon button here. Then on this button, you can actually select the chain. So simply switch to the Base chain and you can once again click here to transfer funds and simply deposit your money from your Base wallet into your Base Photon wallet. So now that you've signed up and deposited on Solana, Base and Ethereum, you can always go to this button up here and select whichever chain you wanna trade meme coins on. Give yourself a pat on the back because the basics are finished. We can now move on to trading. Before I carry on, you need to know that when dealing with meme coins, you should be comfortable losing all the money you put in them. Crypto in general is risky and meme coins are that on steroids. On top of that, there are hackers and scammers all trying to steal your money. So it's important you bookmark all your favorite crypto sites such as Photon, because if you instead just use Google search, there's a decent chance a fake copycat website will pop up that will steal all of your money. Also, look into getting a hardware wallet if you're serious about crypto. These wallets exist off of your computer. They're like USBs. So if your computer gets hacked, the hacker still won't be able to access your funds since they're sitting in your hardware wallet and not on your computer. Ledger is my favorite hardware wallet provider. Moving on, you need to know the definitions of a few key words to understand meme coin trading because these words are literally used everywhere. Firstly, contract address. This is the unique identifier for coins. Multiple meme coins can have the same name, but they can't have the same contract address. If I search up Pepe, you can see there are multiple Pepe coins here. But if I search up the contract address for the biggest Pepe coin, you get the actual Pepe coin and not a random scam someone just created. Liquidity. This is the amount of money available to trade in the market for a specific coin. Liquidity pool or LP. This is where the liquidity for a coin sits. It's basically a big pot of money that contains two coins, allowing you to trade between them. For example, when you buy a meme coin, you send your money, normally in the form of Solana or ETH, into a liquidity pool. And the liquidity pool sends you back the equivalent in the meme coin you want. And that's how trading meme coins works. Every meme coin has its own pot of money, allowing you to buy and sell it. Now, a rug pool is when the dev of a meme coin steals all the money in the liquidity pool. If you buy a coin and it rug pools, then there's no big pot of money anymore, so you can't actually sell your coin. Because the liquidity pool has no more Solana or Ethereum to give you in return. So you lost your money and your meme coin is now worthless. Volume. This is the amount of money that has gone into trading a coin. The market cap for a meme coin is the amount of coins it has times the price. So for Dog with Hat, it has a supply of 998 million. That times $1.75 is the market cap. Now this is a useful metric for valuing how much a meme coin is worth altogether, but be careful if your meme coin has very low liquidity, as you can actually manipulate the price of a coin easily if your coin doesn't have much liquidity. You could have a coin be worth 10 
9 billion US dollars on paper, but only have $10 of liquidity. So it's not technically worth 10 billion. So with that out of the way, let's actually get into trading. So Photon acts as your central hub for how to find and trade meme coins. If you go to the new pairs tab, you'll see all the new coins launching, but a lot of these are shit coins and there's hundreds of new coins launching every minute. A better tab is the trending tab. This shows you all the meme coins that are hot right now. You can also sort these meme coins by any of the metrics above. For example, the date they were created, the market cap, the volume, and there's more settings for filtering coins here. You can click on a coin and get its full page with a chart that you can draw on. First thing you should do when scoping out a new coin is head down here to the data and security tab and make sure there are no red signals. So on this coin, everything is green. I won't go into too much detail as to what exactly these mean, but mint authority basically means that the owner of the coin can't mint any more tokens. So obviously you don't want to buy a coin where the owner can just print an infinite amount of coins and dump on you. Freeze authority, this means the owner of the coin can stop people buying and selling. You obviously don't want that. LP burnt, you want to see the vast majority of the LP burnt. This prevents the owner of the coin being able to rug pull. Holder distribution is another cool metric. You don't want to buy a coin where, you know, one wallet holds 90% of the supply and is ready to dump on you. Once again, you can also check out the holders tab right here and just see what the distribution looks like. Now that was for Solana coins. On Ethereum and base, the data security tab is a little bit different. So for buy, sell and transfer tax, you ideally want this to be zero or a very low number. These mean that every time you buy, sell, or transfer the coin, a tax is taken from that transaction and then sent to wherever the devs want it. For example, if the sell tax was 50%, then if you sold this coin, 50% of all the coins you sold would be sent somewhere else and taken out of your wallet. So you obviously don't want that to happen. And in general, these being high will put a lot of people off from buying your coin. Lock liquidity, this is basically the same thing as LP burn on Solana tokens. If this is close to 100%, then the owner of the project can't rug pull the project. So in this case for this token, 0% is locked, meaning the dev can actually rug pull this if they want to. Renounced contract, you want to see this yes as well. If it isn't renounced, that means the dev can just change the code of the token and steal all your money as well. On top of that, you also want to see a coin that is open source. So this coin is not open source, meaning we don't actually know what code went behind into making this token. There could be some malicious code there. You also don't want to see a whitelist. This means special wallets have special privileges for the coin. You also don't want any proxy contracts. And there are some more metrics, but you could just hover on the side right here and just read exactly what they mean. So this coin is an example of a coin that is very likely a scam. Because it isn't open source, we can't verify all this other information. Not only that, there's no lock liquidity and the contract isn't renounced. And this is an example of a good coin. Zero issues, everything is green, open source, lock liquidity is at 100%, renounced. You get the point. There's some more websites you can use to double check whether or not your coin is a scam too. For Solana, you can use rogcheck.xyz and for coins on Ethereum or Base, you can use token sniffer. These sites also have some extra features like bubble maps that allow you to see coin distribution, but I won't go too much into that in this video as it's quite advanced. So if the coin looks good, you can also go further up and check out the Twitter, join the Telegram and check out the coins website. But once again, be careful connecting your wallet to any website and signing transactions. You don't want to do that for a random coin you don't know. Now, some coins don't have this information, especially if the coin is really new. So you can also copy and paste a contract address and put it on a different website called Dex screener to see if that has any more information and you can search for it on X and just see if there's any information about it there. So below the chart on the coins page, you can also see the latest buys and sells. You can see your current holdings of the coin. You can see the top traders along with the profit they made on the coin. You can also look at the current top holders of the coin. You can also click on their wallet and open their SoulScan page to see what other coins they're holding. SoulScan is something called a block explorer. It just gives you more information about what's happening on the chain. And these are great tools to find good traders you can potentially copy trade. For example, if you noticed a coin just went up like 100x, it may be worth to check out what other coins the top traders or holders are also holding. Lastly, you can also click on the side here and it will show you all the activity on that coin for that specific wallet. So you can track exactly where someone bought or sold, etc. To actually buy a coin, you just go here, input the amount you want to buy and boom, it's lightning fast. You can sell in the exact same place as well. You can also do this thing called a quick buy. If you're scrolling rolling through different coins, you see a coin you like that has just launched, you can instantly buy it using the quick buy option. Just turn this on, input the amount of Solana you want to quick buy with, and if you click this button, it will instantly buy the coin. Well done if you got this far because you can now trade meme coins on all the most popular chains. Next, how exactly do these god traders actually pick meme coins that end up going mainstream? Now before I move on, I want to remind you once
once again that I'm not a financial advisor. Once again, meme coins are so incredibly risky. Read the disclaimer on screen. So this Anon trader called Meme Millions or Apathetic Whale has made eight figures from almost every single meme coin that has ever emerged. He held SHIB at literally a price of zero for months before it went on to do like a million X. And if you weren't aware, Shiba Inu was the best performing meme coin of the last bull market. He was early into Whiff, Bonk, Pepe, and more. And I'm going to take you through a full checklist someone compiled from his tweets on how exactly he finds a mainstream meme coins early. And make sure you follow at Slip Slider on X. He's the person who compiled this list after studying Apathetic Whale's X account. So this is a trouble checklist. So you want to make sure your meme coins aren't doing this. So first sign of a bad meme coin is that it is trying to copy and paste an existing meme and assuming that the energy will transfer. So a popular meme is Wojak, but just because a coin has Wojak in its name doesn't mean it will be a success. There are probably hundreds of failed Wojak tokens. Also watch out for derivatives without a redeeming quality. A derivative is just a coin that launches and is based off of a more successful project. So for example, when Pepe launched, it spawned a bunch of Pepe copycat coins slash derivatives. So we had coins like Pepe 2.0 that came out. And what he's saying is that if there's a derivative, I'm going to use Pepe 2.0 as an example here. You know, there's no real effort put into it. It's just Pepe bot 2.0. Then there's a decent chance that this coin right here won't ever reach mainstream significance. It needs to have some sort of redeeming quality if it is to copy an already existing coin. One good example of a coin that was a derivative but had a redeeming quality was Dog with Hat. This is technically a derivative from Dogecoin because they're both just popular dog coins, except this wasn't just a copy and paste dog coin. This was a dog with a cute hat on it. This right here is a derivative, but with a redeeming quality. You can kind of see the difference in quality when comparing this and Dogecoin to something like Pepe 2.0 and Pepe. Next up, ugly slash angry slash try hard anywhere in the effective valence. So he's basically saying don't buy negative coins with negative feelings, buy coins that are very, very good. You know, Dogecoin, dog with hat, they're all funny, they're all cute, they all bring you good feelings, but you don't really see angry coins, negative coins reach mainstream status. And that's because the mainstream audience just don't tend to like those negative coins as much as positive coins. Also avoid meme coins that have a forced concept. So for example, someone just calling a coin the 100 billion coin will not take it to 100 billion market cap. It needs something more. Vulgar slash coins that are dealing with copyright, etc. as these will block the Binance slash Coinbase listings that are needed for these coins to truly go mainstream. Dogecoin, Shiba Inu, who got those major exchange listings because they were not vulgar and they didn't have any copyright issues. So make sure your coins don't have any of these. Next up is scope. So the first thing you need to watch out for is that your meme coin isn't overly niche. This isn't fatal, but make sure the price still has enough room to run. So this is the same point that I was making earlier. You know, if we take Dogecoin, for example, a dog is not a niche thing. Everyone knows what a dog is and everyone likes it. Therefore, dog coins have the ability to go pretty high up. But if it's something, you know, more specific, like a very, very niche meme that only a few people on, let's say, crypto Twitter or on 4chan know, then that obviously has less room to grow. Another warning sign is trying to offer new tech for the meme coin. This should be left to tech memes like Cardano and not to actual meme coins. Dogecoin and Shiba Inu did not rise to fame because they had cool tech behind it. They simply rise to fame because they had a cool, funny meme behind it. We already talked about this point right here, overly pumped, check current versus future potential value. And this last one is very important in my opinion, the wrong chain. The layer one should match the memes ethos and community. Solana's community and the meme coins on it have a different vibe to the meme coins on other chains such as Base. Base tends to have more safe meme coins, whereas Solana's meme coins tend to be more degen and potentially even more offensive. So coins with Solana's vibe that launch on Base don't tend to do well, and coins with base vibes that launch on Solana also don't tend to do well as well. So the coin should match the ethos and vibe of the chain it's listed on. And there's no real way to teach this to you in a video. You just have to trade on these chains and just get the general vibe of each of them. In my opinion, you should rewatch that checklist a few times just to get those rules drilled into your brain. Now, I do want to remind you as well, just because a coin satisfies that checklist does not mean for sure it will go on to do crazy numbers. It could still die. The meme coin world is crazy. Crazy, so keep that in mind. It's just meme coins that do satisfy that checklist have a higher chance, according to me, millions at being good coins to hold. So you know how pros pick a thousand X meme coins. Let's move on to something just as important, which are general trading lessons and strategies from the best crypto traders on earth. I've compiled these lessons from meme millions, but also another trader called Gigantic Rebirth, who was also an early
early holder in Shiba Inu. He was one of the top traders on the FTX leaderboards before the exchange collapsed. He grew a thousand dollars into what is now assumed to be a billion or at least a few hundred million. Let's get into their top lessons to make you a profitable trader. These lessons are coming from the best of the best when it comes to crypto trading, so pay attention. First up from Meme Millions, if he buys a meme coin, he is holding it until it's worth billions or zero in market cap. 100 to 1000 X is unique to crypto and he wants to maximize his chances of hitting these. And it's impossible to catch a 100 to 1000 X if you sell it a 2 to 20 X. It's also impossible if you sell within the first 14 to 30 days of a new project's life. It can take months to unfold. When he first bought Shiba Inu, it went to literal zero and was flatline dead looking like a rug for eight months before anything happened. He had actually written it off as a loss after buying a few percent of the supply. After 13 months of holding, it reversed and he held till around 15 to 30 billion US dollars in market cap. Never sell dust. So Me Millions trading strategy seems to be that he finds a bunch of coins that satisfy the checklist I just talked about and he then spreads his money between a bunch of projects but he hopes at least one or more of the projects he does buy will go on to do 100 to 1000 X plus. So a risky strategy, he probably ends up investing into a bunch of projects that just end up dying but a few of them he does end up holding go on to be just humongous winners. Keep in mind this is just his specific meme coin strategy. There's hundreds of other trading strategies you can research after this video to see if they work better for you. Next are lessons from Gigantic Rebirth. So work hardest and most relentlessly when conditions are at their easiest. So when the markets are going up and you're seeing a bunch of altcoins launching left, right and center doing good numbers. And take a vacation and rejuvenate when the tide comes in. Humans have a limited bandwidth. So you can't put 100% of your brain power in the markets 24 seven forever. Next up, he says to focus on newer coins. Coins that are full of hope that are lacking bag holders and that have a team that aren't rich yet and are still motivated and incentivized to create hype for their project. So this is not him saying go out there and buy every single coin that launched one hour ago. I think this tweet is just about meme coins that are like three years old or something. If a coin is three years old, it's already pumped massively, the team are rich, then there's a decent chance that probably isn't the next 100 or 1000 X. The next lesson comes from how to actually identify a top. Now identifying a top is very, very tricky, but according to Gigantic Rebirth, whenever the volume of a coin becomes larger than the market cap, that is a good indicator of a potential top. So this is one of the indicators he uses to know when to start selling a coin. Lastly, one of the best ways to find amazing coins is simply networking. Go to every crypto conference, go to every crypto meetup. You wouldn't believe the amount of people he knows who made it simply just by knowing the right person. And in fact, GCR actually discovered Shiba Inu from a private group chat he was in. So he himself didn't even find Shiba Inu on his own. It was because he was in the right network. Think about it like this. If even the best traders on earth rely on their network to get into good trades, then what chance do you have at making it on your own? Getting a network should be your number one priority right now, especially since time for the bull market is running out. If you like this video, you should definitely check out the K Crypto Hub. It's my private community where I share my live cryptocurrency portfolio that I've grown from just about $70 to over a million, where me and my team of world-class traders drop our trade alerts, our general thoughts on the market, and just all the ways we're profiting from crypto. I'd love to have you in there. Check it out using the link below. Like, subscribe, and I'll see you soon.